Welcome to Lizzie's Workshop. Today I'm going to be making a canvas that I'm starting off with book pages for. And as I'm flipping through the book, I'm looking for pages that have a consistency of text, not necessarily a full page, but um, for the most part, yes, and no pictures and stuff like that. I didn't want any colors to um, demand there that I use them. So because I want this paper to absorb the sprays and inks and stuff that I plan to put on it, I was hoping to just um, glue it on with Mod Podge so I didn't go over the top of the pages with Mod Podge. I just went um, underneath and then pushed it on. And because I wanted it to be a smooth absorption and I didn't want um, the lines from the Mod Podge to show and resist the sprays, I tried to make sure that I didn't get any Mod Podge on the top surface of any of the paper. So I'm going to skip ahead here pretty quick, um, just so you don't have to watch me Mod Podge and paper the whole canvas. But um, So I'll tell you a little bit about this one. This one is called um, Points Out of Paradise, and it's for my husband's uncle, actually. And the reason that I'm giving him something that's so flowery is because he is like a magician with poinsettia. You know how every year you get a poinsettia and or the office gets a poinsettia or something and as soon as Christmas is over the poor thing dies this horrible dried out death and even if it doesn't die a horrible dried out death it tends to get you know moldy or have bugs or something and someone throws it out. But um, this uncle is able to somehow continue to grow it throughout the seasons and then hide it in a closet and bring it out just in time for it to bloom with these beautiful red uh, leaves right right at Christmas time every year. So he's kind of like a poinsettia magician, I guess you could say. So um, that's where this idea kind of stemmed from. Um, there were some issues that I was having with this canvas and one of them is that I was working too late at night and I was way too tired to be doing the project. So when I do that it kind of shuts off my thinking brain and turns on my, well let's my experimental brain and I really shouldn't have allowed my experimental brain to come into this because I really liked how the canvas started out, how the background started out and then I, when I just kept going and going and going I got to a point where I didn't like it and then I got to a point where I did like it and then I didn't and then I did so it kind of grew into this love-hate struggle and uh, it didn't have to be that way it could have just been the way it was right after I spray the first couple inks on or the first ink on it but, um, c'est la vie. So I don't know who's who made this stencil. I usually once I take them out of the package, I kind of throw the package away and don't really pay attention again. So I'm not sure who made the stencil, but I am pretty sure that that is a um, Mr. Huey's spray. And I really love this stencil and how crisp and clear it comes out. It just seems to be the perfect thickness. It just seems to be the perfect um, pattern and it it just it works out just so elegantly and so perfectly so what I'm saying is I should have left it this canvas just like this and then gone on with the flowers but um, instead I had to make things complicated <laughs> so the spray that I just sprayed on there I really like how that shape turned out but the problem with it was that it said it was cherry tomato and so I was expecting this really dark crisp red spray and what I ended up with was uh, grabbing the chalkboard shimmer mist version of it from Tattered Angels and it ended up being this really beautiful pink shimmery thing and I so I kind of went on from there trying to cover up the pink. I had this musical mask and I have been wanting to use it and never found a project to use it on but um, nothing I think about uh, using it on ever works out. So that's just the same for this project. That, st that mask didn't really work the way I had hoped that it would. I think that the stick-on masks would work better with um, a paint rather than a spray because the spray liquid kind of slides underneath the edges of the mask. So what you saw there was another um, Mr. Huey's in red. I'm not sure what it's called. It might be Hot Diggity. And then um, the stencil that was there was called Bubbles by Tim Holtz. I'm not sure what the other masks, who the masks were by, but... And here's another one I just picked up at a garage sale. I'm trying to add the green back in because the green really worked out well. And I'm just not succeeding. 
I'm really not. I really should have just left it as the green or, or put the canvas away and started a new one with the same kind of idea, but um, I didn't do that. I kept going and trying to make it work. So I went through and I put a whole bunch of this orangey yellow paper through on the die cut machine on the big shot with the poinsettia die. And then I cut out the dead space or the empty space with my scissors, fussy cutting, and then I used them as stencils as well. And then I have the little ones as well. But I only had three of each, so I didn't want it to look too symmetrical. I didn't like that one, so I tried again. I really wish I would have had a white spray because a white spray would have gone really well with these. Since then I have picked up a white spray, but um, I didn't have one at the time. I didn't even know it was available at the time until I saw it there. I think it's a, a Heidi swap. So I did dry it because everything was kind of moving a little bit too much and, and it was absorbing in the way that I didn't want it to absorb and I just kind of kept going with this. So um, the next part that I was trying to do was these intricate die cut that fit the other die cuts. Um, I really wanted to put a modeling paste through them and so that's what I did. But I had to, this is sped up 15 times because I had to be so careful and I didn't have the right tool in order to get it into all the fine intricate little spaces and I did want to be a little bit precise with this. So I just kind of slowly worked the paste in and then pulled the stencil up and uh, put it off to the side to dry. And then I just kept going with these, with these stencils that I made out of paper. Um, I really, really, really like this part. Um, I like how the, the poinsettias came out. The only thing is that I, when I started this part of it, I kind of envisioned that because the, I was under the impression that the spray ink that I had sprayed on was a water base and that it, the paste would pull the water based red ink up through and it would be more pink in color. That didn't end up happening they stayed white which is okay but yeah so i just go through and do all of them and then lift them up and um those stencils are now nice and crisp and they have this really beautiful color variation and they have a little bit of crustiness to them so it adds a whole bunch of different um texture and depth to them so i'm going to be keeping them and using them on another project i really like them um, I didn't know how often I would use the dye that I had for this, but I think that uh, I think that's the answer is going to be quite a bit. So I kind of got a little bit tired of <laughs> doing it, taking so long. So I kind of mucked up the last one there, but managed to fix it with a wet wipe. So I'm not sure why I did this, um, but I do like the effect. But the thing is, is that I really like those flowers that are that you can see right now, the just the outline of them. Um, and I should have probably just used those flowers and that placement for what I'm doing now. Because all I'm doing is drawing a black line around the stencil, so to speak, or the mask. And then I'm going to gesso the entire page. Because I know that the pink is just a little bit too much. But in gessoing the page, I'm turning all the red into pink as well. So like I said, I'm, my brain kind of shut off with this project, and that's a little bit unfortunate. Well, you know, when you're, when you're doing something for somebody else, um, this wasn't commissioned, it was a gift from me. But when you're doing something from someone, for someone else, you kind of have to stay present. So that was a little bit of a learning curve, which it shouldn't have been. I should know that already, but... Um, I had two canvases to do, or I did two canvases in this week, and um, I wasn't really concentrating too much on uh, on one. I was kind of, while one project dried on one step, I would jump to the other one, so my brain was constantly shifting for these two projects. But um, it all it all worked out in the end. It all, the recipient enjoyed his, his uh, piece, so. So yeah, I'm going through and I'm covering it all with gesso and I'm lightening it all up and that's, I'm really going to like that. I don't like how, how pink it got, but I do like how um, I'm lightening everything up now with the gesso. And I, I could have just left it like that as well and gone on with the rest of the project, but once again, 
<laughs> I kept going. And I always say, if you don't like it, keep going. But I have to start reminding myself that if I do like it, I have to stop. And one of my girlfriends was making fun of me not to to uh, distant in the distant past. She was saying that um, I just don't know when to quit when it comes to crafting because I can always think of something else to add to, to everything. I can always think of another thing to add to the theme or another color to add to the page or another element or another depth or another this or that. And she says, you know, I, I, it's she's surprised that anything in my workshop ever stays the way that I finish it because um, she fully expects me to to go back and finish it again and finish it again and finish it again. I just don't know when enough is enough. Well, that sounds bad, but it's actually not a bad thing. So I'm sorry I went off camera here, but I'm just filling in all the spaces with the gesso to try and get the whole the whole canvas kind of in a kind of in a, a state where it all is nice and, and not necessarily smooth. I did want the, the like all the different depths in there, but um, I also wanted to have the outlines of the poinsettias that I traced. So once this is all done, um, I'm going to skip to the next uh, part of the process and um, I do have to say that I did skip quite a bit in the next part of the process when it comes to filming and um, so I'll have to tell you all about it as soon as I explain this so I really love that mask of the music notes so I tried to do it again but this time I covered up the blank spots and then I decided I was going to do it with a dark gray silver shimmer which is kind of odd because everything I'm going towards is going to be gold, but this ended up being like a black silvery shimmer. And um, this this really led me astray because I looked at it and I liked it just exactly like that. And then I picked those off and I still liked it, but I should have dried it with my heat gun. And because I didn't dry it with my heat gun, it continued to react and spread and it didn't really stay all in one place. So the next thing I'm doing is I am spraying some of the red paint um, from Mr. Huey's, I think it's hot diggity, onto some gel matte medium. And I am just gelling these flowers in order to make them a little bit more um, resistant to moisture and to give them a little bit more um, leaf texture. And the problem is that this paper is origami paper, so it's very, very thin, and the minute that you get it moist, it just curls right up on you. So that was a little bit of a struggle. If you look just to the side, to my side there, you'll see the big pile of green and red ones. And what that was is I took paper in um, green and in brown, I think it was, or in red, and I went through and... Um, oh no, it's brown. So I went through and I went around every single leaf and... Uh, flower with either two shades of green or two shades of red ink and a little sponge finger sponge dauber and then just above that pile uh, closer to the bottom of the screen there's another set of these ones that I'm doing now but in a smaller version so in the origami paper but the smaller the smaller version and I once again I had sprayed it with the red ink in order to give the small the white or the origami paper flowers just a little tinge of pink and make them a little bit stronger with the gel matte medium. So the next thing I'm going to do is set that aside and let it dry a little bit but um, after this I'm going to start assembling the flowers. So because I have already gel matte medium these flowers and ink these flowers um, they're all ready to go but some of them have had um, issues with sticking together and some of them have like spider webs of gel matte medium in between the leaves so I'm just going through each one and I'm cutting all that stuff out separating it all out and making sure that I don't have any of those extra little tidbits in there. I could have just left this set of three little ones together but I wanted to make sure that I was all everything was uniform and ready and set to go. I really really love this green and this green actually it came from a gift bag we had a, uh, it was craft paper on the inside and it was um, this beautiful green paper on the outside and I literally took that green paper 
or the, the paper bag and cut it open and used all the green I could possibly salvage to um, make these green leaves. And then the, the red leaves, they're actually from um, a gift as well. Somebody gave, wrapped one of their, I got a card kit from the G plus community of card craft or crafters community, sorry. And um, we did a craft a card kit club. And so the paper that was wrapped around one of the cards was this really, really nice thick, um, just packing paper, but it was perfect in order to thicken up the leaves and, and get the right um, thickness and heaviness of leaves that I was looking for. So I put that through the die cutting machine too a whole bunch of times and ended up with all these leaves. So I'm going to slow this down to one times and I'm really working slow here. Um, the reason I'm doing this is because I wanted to show you how I assembled these flowers. So if it's a big flower, I take a big green set of leaves and a big red set of leaves and I adhere them together. And I'm just using Aileen's um, quick dry tacky glue. And the reason I'm not using hot glue is because I want to be able to sew through the center of these leaves. And if I use hot glue, it's going to get so thick and heavy that there's no way I'm going to be able to get a needle through it. So then I went and grabbed one of those sets of leaves that I just finished or just finished um, matte, putting through the matte medium through the gel. And I'm going to lay that on there too. And that is based, the base for the large poinsettias. The second half of the large poinsettias is how I make the small ones as well. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to, if with the small ones, when I get to it, I'm going to start with the small green leaf poinsettia leaves. And then I'm going to put on a dark red poinsettia leaves. And then I'm going to put on a um, origami paper set of leaves. And I'll do that for every set. So that means that the large flowers are made up of five die cuts and the small paper flowers are made out of three die cuts of the same die, from the same die. So what I'm doing here is when I put the gel matte medium on, some of the edges of some of the papers curled quite uh, um, aggressively. So all I was doing is smoothing out the edges so that I could have enough space and, and stuff in order to assemble it properly and not have the leaves all curled in every which way, which I could have left because poinsettias do do that. Next time, next time I'll leave them all wonky. <laughs> So yeah, so there I go, and I assembled all of them, just like that. So once all the flowers are all glued together, what I'm going to do is put the beads in to the center. Um, you know how poinsettia has those little ball flowers with the stamens in the center of it? Well, I kind of wanted to achieve that effect and my um, grouping color or my stabilizing color or um, whatever was um, supporting color was gold. So I took these uh, leftover gold beads, which I've collected from all over the place. Mostly I've inherited them. And... Um, I put several or a couple different sizes of these beads into the center of every single one of those poinsettias. And I didn't do it with any um, real method to my madness. I just tried to make sure that my punch holes weren't too close to the edge of any of the papers and that I had an odd number of beads in every flower and that I used at least two different sizes in each flower of bead. Okay, so there was a lot of method to my madness, but, you know. <laughs> and so there we go. That's what they're all going to look like. So then what I'm going to do is just curl each of the leaves outwards with my bone folder and my thumb. Um, and then once I've got them all folded outwards, I'm going to crinkle them from the center to the, to the tip of each or of the base leaves, sorry. 
And that way it just gives it a little bit more depth and a little bit more dimension to the final flower. And then what it also does is it sinks the center point of the flower down. See how I'm kind of bending it around the center point of, of some of the flowers? And there we go, a nice um, textured flower. The next thing I did was I continued on working on the base. And I this was a late at night. I shouldn't have done it. And this is this is where some of my regrets do come in. Um, if Okay, fine. So I added gold around each one of the flowers, and that's where I should have left it. Rubbed the gold in and been happy and glued everything on and called it a day. But um, something inside of me said, well, your project's not done until you outline in black. And I don't know why I was needing to outline in black. I really should have just said, okay, I'll put it down and I'll look at it again in the morning and then I'll decide on the black because once the black is on, you can't get the black off. So then I had this, then I had this conundrum of, okay, I'm going to put some black on. How much black do I need? And I thought this is the perfect amount of black. Wait a second. I'm using a gelato. Now I have to spread this or it's just going to stay chunky and continue to move. So then I took a wet wipe and I moved the black, which I don't know. I didn't, I didn't like how it turned out, but I had to be consistent. I had to finish it. Um, and then I could try and cope with it afterwards. And I knew that I knew that I could try and figure it all out afterwards. And it wasn't such a great big deal. So then I added some more black in here and there to add shadowing to those black edges. Um, I did spray a little bit, hoping that the water would react with the gelato and that I could pull off some of the black and I could pull off some of the gold, but I wasn't that lucky. So then I went and spread the gold because it was still a little bit moist. And I spread the gold out a little bit more to, so that it took up a little bit more real estate and lightened up the picture a little bit because I'm finding that my background's getting quite dark and I didn't really want to go in that direction. So then once that's done, I decide that, okay, well, I've outlined everything. Now I'm going to dry it and see how it comes out in the, at the end of being dry. And I still wasn't very happy with that, that black, but I kept working on it. I just wanted to mention here that when I'm blow drying, I do go nice and smooth and gently, but I didn't always do that. Um, and then this past weekend, I accidentally dropped and kicked. You know how you try and catch something with your foot? Yeah, no, I, I kicked my... I kicked my glue or my heat gun so hard that it kind of unplugged and flew across the room. <laughs> so <laughs> but hence to say my heat gun is no more. I had to go out and buy myself a new heat gun after that. But um, yeah. So here I am trying to compensate a little bit. And what I'm doing is I'm taking my white jelly roll and I'm going and, and drawing random lines in my with my white jelly roll. And that worked to a point. And then I'm going through and I've picked, I've never used this before, but this is a brush tip, brush tip pit pen. Um, I really love India ink because I was a drafts person for landscape architecture and I really spent a lot of time with Mylar and India ink. So I really did enjoy um, using it and I, I've been wanting to take out my Mylar, my uh, India ink pens with all the different nibs and such, but I don't want to get them all um, cluttered with mixed media. So maybe we'll see if I use them on another project, like maybe on my um, on my Zen tangling or something. So after I've gone through, I've, I'm drying it again, just making sure everything is a little bit heat set. And then I'm adding a little bit more black in order to create um, depth and shadow because I when I put the black around the first time, I didn't really pay attention to that. And that's usually the direction that you would take with black is depth and shadow. So I go through and I fill this all in and and uh, off we go. Um, I um, 
took found this my my theme was going towards gold in this at this point and i found this ribbon and i should have left the ribbon flat and adhered it on just flat because that's much more masculine than twirling it and so i did twirl it i did uh, attach it to the back and then twist it and around and make it all fancy across the front so but that is what it is spin 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 and then glued it down and then I do another one in the other direction or on the other side and then in the other direction so across both sides like pillars and then across the top kind of like a hmm, a ribbon arbor I guess you could say and yeah all I'm using to adhere that on is sticky strip from um, it's too super sticky two-sided tape and it's this one is from Stampin' Up, I believe. So the next thing I do is I am grabbing a frame. I used a thin board canvas so that I could put it in a frame because my whole intention from the beginning was to have this um, a giant 3D object to, to do, to use. And so that's what I ended up doing. Um, these canvases, sometimes they're not perfectly square, so they do fit quite snug. So I hope that that doesn't cause too much strain to the um, frame and break it. But it, the potential is there. So what I'm doing now is I'm building up the poinsettias, and then I'm going to glue them on with my hot glue gun. And so some of the green ones I kept as le just the green leaves, and some of them I or the majority of them I included as part of the flowers. And so I'm just using a hot glue gun here. Part of the reason I'm using hot glue is for speed. Um, the other part of the reason I'm using hot glue is for longevity because the hot glue gun usually will keep everything adhered together for quite a long time. So I don't know what the contact point is going to be for this flower so I kind of just put it in an L shape in that corner and then let the let the um, thing go how it would and make sure that it would all work out. I added some extra leaves into this corner just because it seemed like it needed them. And then I added the green leaves along the edge there because I felt like we needed a border of green along that edge. Thinking about it now, I really should have flipped this canvas over and covered the black, which I still wasn't loving. I loved the white of the flowers, of the paste flowers, but I didn't love the black. I could have just flipped it over the other direction and covered the black up with the flowers. But um, right once again, it was too late at night and it didn't occur to me. So that's, that's another thing when you're doing a gigantic project is that it doesn't all have to be done in one sitting. It's For me, for my process, it's really beneficial for me to step away from my project, um, go have a coffee, go spend time with a friend, and when my mind is relaxed again, come back and, and work on it some more. Um, sometimes I like to sleep on it, or sometimes I it's just enough to go get the kids from school and come back and so on. So I think that that the key for me and for my production and productivity and for my creativity to be at its best, I really do need to take those mental breaks and those emotional setbacks or step backs from whatever I'm creating. Sorry I went off screen here. I am just uh, assembling it all there. Um, that's probably the best part, but um, I did I did go off screen. I'm sorry. I did catch it though, I believe. So we're lucky there. So there we go, I'm I've, I've just adding all the flowers in layers on there and it really does end up being poinsettia paradise because there's so many poinsettias on there that um, you really can't see anything but poinsettias. The other thing is that um, I really, I when I was designing this project in my head, my thought was to use music of um, Bach or Mozart, like print something off the internet and then distress it. Um, my other thought with this project was that I would um, print off papers from the internet that were legal, of course, and in all kinds of different languages because this individually, individual really likes different languages. So that was my intention, but when it came down to starting the project, the only things that I had on hand were the origami paper that was both um, 
some of the pages had music notes i don't know what the music was and some of the pages had different languages and some of the ma the pages had mathematical equations and um the family that this is going to um is really heavy on the the math in their family um a lot of a lot of um, the adults have chosen math careers um the family hit this person's extended family nonetheless but um so I felt that it was all fitting to include all the the music, the math, and the and the uh, language. So yeah, I just ended up curling it all up and doing it all and adding some more white and then um, seeing where I could get with adding a white gelato, lightening it up just that little bit, little bit, little bit all the time. And I think at this point it occurred to me that I should have just glued them on upside down, but. Once I had established the treble clef, I just could not, which is the the music signature, the music sign, I d couldn't uh, tempt myself to flip it over upside down, which I'm sure his daughter will be pleased about, She as she's a musician, so. <laughs> but yeah, so then I'm going back in with my white jelly pen, and I'm adding just a little bit more. That actually might be my signal, my white signal that I'm using there. The jelly rolls tended to get clogged quite quickly when used on top of gelato, so maybe that was that. So I'm covering up these flowers because I'm going to take my um, golden smooch spritz and I'm going to just um, get some of this gold onto here. I'm still not liking how dark those poinsettias became, so I was, was trying to fix them and I got to a point where I knew I was just working too hard, so I, I stopped. So yeah, so there is the um, almost finished project. The next thing I do is I took some white acrylic paint and I mixed it with water so that it would be nice consistency for spattering. And then I went over the entire thing after it was a nice homogeneous mixture which or homogeneous mixture and um, spattered it all over those poinsettias. And it kind of gave the impression of snow falling on the poinsettias, which with it being winter time and Christmas time, that seemed to be quite fitting. So here we go. I'm using one brush to tap against the other brush and um, flicking, just flicking white to add that little extra, bring, maybe bring, them, bring the border into the center of the, the image. And next in this video is the close-ups. So here's a close-up of the individual poinsettia flowers, and that's just the calligraphy and writing and language and stuff like that, and the green underneath and the red. Here is another close-up of the up in the corner. And see, you can see this the signal pen, the white pen on the black. And there is some more. Here's how it all goes together with the gold and the black and the white and everything like that. And uh, not a very good picture, but this is the end picture and the full picture, and I hope you enjoyed this project. Thank you for joining me on Lizzie's Workshop.